Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. Today I'm going to show you how I smoke a whole turkey out on the big green egg. We're going to brine this turkey to get some flavors in it for 24 hours. Then I'm going to inject it to put some more flavor right in the meat so we know that every bit of it's moist and juicy. And before we get out of the smoker, we're going to season that outside to make sure that we have the perfect Thanksgiving burn. So when I'm doing turkeys, I'm looking for turkeys that are in the 12 to 14 pound range. I know a lot of people, you don't want to buy those big giant 20, 22 pound birds and do those for Thanksgiving, but trust me, that's not the size turkey you want to be cooking. You want to stick with these smaller uh, 12 to 14 pounders because they cook even. The breast is proportionate with those uh, legs and thigh quarters, and it just makes for a, a better tasting bird. It's juicy all the way through and all the meat gets done at the same time. So if you're feeding a lot of people and you think you're going to need more turkey, just do a couple of these 12 to 14 pounders instead of trying to do one that weighs 24 pounds. You're going to save yourself time and I promise you the quality of the meat is going to come out better. So when you're buying these turkeys at the supermarket, they're going to come froze. That's how I bought this one. You always want to give yourself at least three or four days for it to thaw out. I always recommend thawing them real slow in the refrigerator. Don't try to put it in hot water to speed the thaw. Don't leave it out on the counter to thaw fast. You want to do it in a controlled environment. Give yourself plenty of time. That way the meat doesn't get contaminated and it's less risk to make one, someone sick. So when you're thawing this turkey in the refrigerator, always drop it down in a platter or a bowl that's going to catch anything. Let it go those four days, then take it out over to the sink and open the package carefully. That's when you're going to remove the neck, the giblets up in the neck cavity. Um, anything else that's packed with it, rinse the turkey out. And it should be really good and defrosted. Three or four days is plenty of time. Then you're ready to talk about the brine. Um, I'm using two gallons of water. And when I make a brine, I always split it up. I'll have just a gallon of fresh water and then I'll take another gallon of water that I've added my one cup of salt and one cup of just table sugar to it. Heated that up to a boil to where everything's dissolving. That's where I'm at right here. I'm gonna add the two waters together. And now we wanna add some aromatics and some enhance the flavor of this brine. So I've got a, a bundle of poultry seasoning herbs right here. I've got sage, fresh thyme, some rosemary. Put that in there and let it steep in that warm water. I'm gonna squeeze some lemons in it that we just halved. A couple bay leaves, some fresh garlic cloves, a couple tablespoons of whole peppercorns. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of Creole seasoning. That's just a basic Creole seasoning. I'm gonna use that to season that turkey before it goes on tomorrow as well. And last but not least, I'm gonna drop in some quartered onion. Just give that a little stir and let it hang out and steep. All right, so our brines come together, you know, let all the ingredients in there kind of steep and hang out, put it in the refrigerator, and you know, you can even do this a day ahead of time, which would be great. It just gives more flavor to come out of those herbs and the lemon juice and the garlic, all that that's in this brine. That's what we want. You just don't ever want to pour it on a, a warm brine over a cold piece of meat. It wouldn't work. So give it a day ahead of time, you know, several hours. If you need to chill it, get it in a cooler with some ice. Just set this container down in it or whatever, you know, whatever pitcher you have your brine in. It'll work great. But now we're dealing with a cool brine and a cool turkey. So that's where we want to be. The next step is to get our brine on the turkey. And what I use are these big Ziploc bags that you can find at Lowe's or Home Depot or maybe Walmart, somewhere like that. It's just an oversized Ziploc bag that's great for brining. And I always do it in a cooler with the bag of ice around it. So I know I'm keeping my temps um, in that safe zone. So now I'm just pouring this brine into the bag. So the turkey's in the bag, the brine's in the turkey, and I want to make sure it stays covered, so I'm just going to gather it up. And what I'll do is I'll just grab like a small zip tie, run around that bag. Now I'm just going to add some more ice to the cooler, make sure it stays nice and cool. That's plenty around it. Turkey submerged. So we've got our turkey nice and cool in the brine. It's gonna stay in there for 24 hours. That's gonna give that brine plenty of time to work on the turkey to infuse some of that flavors down into the meat. We'll see you tomorrow. Show you how we're gonna smoke this thing out on the big green egg. Till then. Okay, the turkey's about dry. I just let it hang out over the sink on a rack for a few minutes to get that excess moisture off of it. Fire's going out in the egg outside. It's coming up to temp. Now it's time to season this turkey. Um, one thing I did do is take a paper towel and kind of blot out any excess moisture that's just stuck in that cavity too. 
You want it, uh, most of that moisture gone because we're gonna put a little cooking spray on the outside so our seasoning stick. Then we're gonna inject it. So first thing I have is just a little canola oil. If you wanna use regular vegetable oil or just you know take a little paintbrush and paint it around, that's fine too. I just find the aerosols easier. Even do the back. And you'll notice I have the wings tucked here. I just took the tips and tucked them back behind, kind of like that turkey's got his arms behind his head. Makes those cook a little more even. It looks better for presentation. First thing we're gonna season with is my all-purpose seasoning. It's that salt, pepper, and garlic blend. Next, we're going with just a little bit of Creole seasoning, and you can use any kind of Creole that you want here. That's all I wanna get on the backside. So the backside's done. It's gonna cook down the majority of the time anyway. We don't flip our turkeys, we cook them up. So now we're gonna get the top side seasoned. So we've got it seasoned, and one thing you'll notice about mine is I left this little plastic piece that they have the legs stuck through on this turkey. Um, it can stand the high heats of cooking in an oven, it definitely can stand the smoker. And this makes it easier for me to move that turkey around, it keeps the legs together, it's gonna make it cook more even, hold all the stuffing in that we're gonna put in the cavity. Um, if you don't have this on your turkeys, go ahead and truss it up tight with some kitchen twine just to hold those legs in place. Um, so next, we've got it seasoned. I want to get a little bit of vegetables and fruit inside the cavity, and it's just to add some extra mass. And you'll see I've got an apple cut up, just a, uh, one onion, and a couple sticks of celery. And I just kind of fill that cavity up. It doesn't have to hold it all, but I want to get as much as I can in there. It's going to help it cook even. Add a little bit of flavor, but it's really just mainly for the mass. Have something extra to fill that cavity up. I don't cook stuffing in my turkeys. We cook dressing in the south and we don't do it inside our birds. We leave that for the casserole dish. Okay, I've got all the seasoning on the outside that I need on this turkey. Now it's time to worry about the inside. Now we put it in that 24 hour brine last night um, so we could get some flavor going on the inside of the meat. But I'm also gonna fortify that with an injection. And I love using these butcher's injection products. I know there's all kinds of injections out there for turkeys. You can buy those ones at your supermarket. The Creole injections are great. You can make them at home. Injection's pretty simple. But I like the butcher's products. I use them all the time. So that's what I'm using in this turkey. Um, it's the butcher's honey, Birdbusher honey. So when you're injected, you just wanna hit the breast, space it out about a inch from each injection. I just give it a couple pumps. Just wanna make sure that it's spread out. I'm gonna make up about two cups of liquid and I don't have to use it all, but I wanna you know, make sure I get the breast, the legs, the thighs. So that about does it for the injection. And you notice I did my injecting last because I don't like to move the turkey around very much. I wanna get the seasoning on it, let it set in a platter and then inject it. That way I'm not losing any of that injection. It's all staying inside the turkey. Last but not least, before it goes on the smoker, if there's anything that needs touched up, I go ahead and, and fix the seasonings a little bit. Um, this one doesn't look too bad. I might hit it just in a few of these bare spots. All right, this turkey is looking great at this point. All we gotta do now is get it out on the smoker. Show you that in just a second. All right, I'm out here on the big green egg. I've got it fired up to 300 degrees. It's right where I wanna smoke turkey. You see, I got some nice smoke going. I got a couple pieces of pecan, a couple pieces of hickory in there scattered out on my hot lump coals to provide that smoke throughout the cook. Now, I don't need smoke the whole time, so you know it's gonna take three or four hours for this turkey to cook. Like about two hours of smoke on it and that's it. So just go, you know, four, three, four chunks maybe of wood on top of your hot coals. And that's gonna give you all you wanna do. Now I wanna get the lid closed. And you see, I'm just gonna adjust my dial to where it's gonna hold right at 300 degrees. You wanna stay at 275 to 300 anytime you're cooking a turkey on a smoker. It's gonna get that skin just right where when you cut it, it has a little bit of crispiness to it, but it's not too soft. We're also gonna keep it sprayed with cooking spray. I'll show you that as we go. All right, we're about an hour into our turkey here. You still see I'm running 300, just right over 300 degrees on the egg. Got a lot of wind today, so it's keeping the temp up just a little high. That's still perfectly fine for this turkey. And I'm gonna get in here. It's time to go ahead and give it a base. See, we're starting to get it a little dry on top and on the wings. And that, when I say baste, I'm using the same canola cooking spray. I'm just gonna moisten up that skin. 
I'm not worried about internal temp yet. We're gonna let it go about another hour, then we'll put a probe thermometer in it. Still got a little bit of smoke going. It'll be finishing out this hour. That's all the smoke we need for our turkey. Get the lid back closed. Keep letting it cook. All right, we're two hours in to our smoked turkey on the big green egg. Skin's still looking good. This is right the stage you want to get it. You don't want any more smoke on it. It's as dark as I want this turkey to get. I'm still going to continue to give it some sprays with the cooking spray just to keep it moist. Some of it's going to crack. That's okay on the legs, a little bit on the wings. And I went ahead and got my Thermaworks dot going. Got it in the breast set to 165. That's the temp we're taking the breast to today. You can see I'm at 138. So I know I've at least got another hour, maybe just a little bit longer, but we're going to monitor it at this stage. This is where it gets real important. We want 175 in the thighs and the dark meat. And then we want 165 in the breast. That's when the turkey's perfectly done. We're going to get it off there at that point. All right, I hear my chef alarm out here going off 165. That lets me know that it is time for turkey. Let's raise it up and check it out. Man, the skin looks awesome on it. That's exactly what you want to see now. I know I had the dot in there watching that internal temp, but I always like to, th to take my thermal pin and just check the thighs. 175, that's perfect. That's what I want to see. I know that juice is going to run clear. So now we can take this turkey off. You know, you want to wear some uh, insulated gloves and then put you on some nitro gloves on top of that. Something to absorb that heat because it is going to be hot. Ease the turkey on the platter. Beautiful smoked turkey on the big green egg. Okay, we got the turkey back inside and don't for once think that you're gonna cut right into this because it is crucial that you let a turkey rest at least 10, 15 minutes at a minimum because you're gonna lose all that moisture that we worked so hard to keep in the meat. What I like to do a lot of times is we'll cook these turkeys at home and then we'll wrap them up in full, put them down in a dry cooler and drive three or four hours with them to have for dinner perfectly fine to do this. You know, what I would typically do is drop the turkey down in a small pan, cover that in full, get a few uh, old towels wrapped around it and stick it down in that dry cooler, keep the lid closed. It's gonna be warm when you get there three hours from now. All right, man, I've waited 15 minutes. That's about all we can take to try this turkey. So let me get it where I can work on it. First thing I'm gonna do is just kind of take the breast off, find the breast bone and work down. Ooh, get that skin. Oh, the juice run. Gosh, I know it's going to be good. Let's get that breast set down there. Show you what we did today. Ooh, man. I like cutting it to where you get a little bit of that skin. On that top bite, you can really taste that Creole seasoning that we seasoned it with. It's juicy and moist as it can be. I'm gonna get this bite right out here. Center of that breast. That's gonna be my bite. Skin came off, so I'm about to get another bite. There's nothing like smoked turkey. I'm gonna tell you, I, I don't know why I wait till Thanksgiving to do these. We ought to be cooking turkeys year round. Hey, if you're thinking about doing a turkey for Thanksgiving, I know you are. Fire up that smoker, run it up 300 degrees, and get that bird in the brine, season it up, and get it out there, man. It will blow an oven roasted turkey away, deep fried turkey, none of those can hold a stick to these smoked turkeys. I'm not just saying that because I cooked this one, I know it's good. Thanks for checking us out on How to Barbecue Right. Hope y'all have a great holiday. Give a turkey a shot. We'll see you next time.